All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, we would like to welcome you to our uh, fall 2020 higher and post-secondary education applied project poster session. Um, thank you all for being here. Um, well, first, we'd like to, of course, welcome our, our, our presenters um, and our graduate students who will be sharing um, with you all shortly about some of the work that they've done over the last uh, 15 weeks, although in many cases for many of our students, this represents um, a longer engagement with the topic, whether it's through their own professional careers or through practicum experiences. Um, but what this culminating um, project will give you an opportunity to do is to learn a little bit more about um, the things that they've been able to research and gather data on and share findings related to uh, critical and timely issues within higher and post-secondary education um, context. Um, I should, should have start by saying my name is uh, Kia McGuire. I'm an associate professor in the higher and post-secondary education program. My gender pronouns are he, him, and his. Um, and I would also like to acknowledge the ancestral homelands of the Akami, Atham, and Pipash people's lands, which we all are working from and learning on. Um, and so I would like to start by simply sharing a little bit about the program and more importantly, where this project fits within that um and the, within students learning experiences and then i'll turn it over to my colleague uh, dr mcintyre who will share a little bit more about the floor of the events um, for today um so um again our higher and post-secondary education program um, is is an opportunity um, and a learning experience that's really geared to prepare uh, professionals to work in a variety of contexts on college and university campuses um, one of the things that is uh, has become a core identity of our program um, has been the process by which we uh, help um, and work alongside students as they learn uh, uh, ways to gather data, um, analyze data, um, all in the service of improving um, um, higher education practice and policy uh, wherever they may be located. Um, and so this applied inquiry or applied project uh, that poster session that you see here today is a, is a culmination of a 15 week um, exercise or experience during the first seven and a half weeks, our students have an opportunity to design a project. Um, of course, these projects are um, oftentimes very ambitious. And over our 15 weeks, we are able to pare it down um, into something that is not only manageable, but that will be impactful with the data that they're able to gather. And then in this uh, session B of the semester, uh, students are able to uh, carry out and, um, their research project. Um, and we'll get a little bit towards this at the end of the, the uh, um, session today when we give some thank yous, but you should know it's, this represents not only the work of our students and the faculty who are in the classroom, but also um, a number of mentors who sign up to um, work with students along and, and help give feedback on their projects as they're being designed and carried out. Um, so we look forward to you all engaging with our um, students today, um, asking them questions, learning about uh, their research, um, and hopefully having a very um, invigorating conversation. So at this point, I'll turn it over to Dr. McIntyre, who will say a little bit more about how the rest of the afternoon will be spent. Thank you. Hi there. My name is Lisa McIntyre. I am an executive director in the university provost office at ASU and teach um, in the master in higher ed program. Um, the applied project is one of my favorite classes um, because as Dr. McGuire said, this is about the topics that the students are most interested in. And so I always learn a lot um, about topics that I maybe don't get exposure to on a regular basis. So I hope um, all our guests um, have that same experience. Um, our students will be presenting um, in small breakout rooms of three to four folks. Um, Dr. McGuire is gonna put a link um, in the chat where you can find the Zoom breakout room link for the individual that you're here to support um, or the breakout room that you're most interested in. Um, they are grouped uh, by topics. Um, we ask that you mute your um, microphones. You're all doing a great job of that if you're not the one presenting. Um, we will present in order of the link that um, Dr. McGuire just shared. There will be a facilitator in the room to just kind of make sure all the technical uh, pieces go right. They will be recorded sessions. We also ask that you hold all your questions until all of the presentations in your breakout room are complete. Um, and then we'll open up that session for questions. We do encourage you to ask questions. Um, these folks are experts on this topic um, and have spent a lot of time and energy 
um, becoming experts. And so um, this is a great opportunity for them to, to answer any questions that you might have. Once all the presentations in your breakout room are complete, we ask you to come back to this main session room um, for us to wrap up the program. So with that, um, Dr. McGuire, anything I missed or you want to add before we break out? Nope, oh, that, that's it. And please reach out to us um, for um, any questions that you might have. Dr. McIntyre and I will be, will be moving from room to room. I see that I just got a message in the chat asking, can, you, can individuals move from room to room? Uh, yes, as long as you're not a presenter. So all of our, our guests beyond the students are able to, um, again, move um, as you would like to bounce around to hear different topics um, of conversation and discussion. Um, and so again, at this time, we'll give folks about you know five to seven minutes to make your way over to your rooms. Um, for, for our students who are on the call, again, look at the sheet as well so that you can go to the room that you will be in. Um, and yeah, I think that's it for now. So thank you and welcome all again. Hello, everybody. Um, I hope you can hear me. <laughs> um, my name is Marta Jinkiewicz, and I will be presenting today on pre-medical student perceived stress and readiness for medical and professional school. First, to review some background, um, currently about 40% of students who are uh, applying for medical school are actually accepted. Um, Pre-medical students not only have to deal with the competitive nature of their chosen career, um, but also potential stress um, that comes from science-heavy coursework, having to complete internships, clinical and volunteer hours, as well as research experience. A recent study that was conducted pre-COVID-19 pandemic times um, showed that almost 40% of pre-medical students experienced enough stress related to their studies that they actually started to question whether they wanted to pursue a career in medicine at all. This study aims to address the problem of the large number of pre-medical students leaving the pre-med pathway due to feelings of stress. I also work um, with um, incoming pre-medical students at ASU with the College of Health Solutions. And I wanted to find out what factors brought on um, an increase in stress so that I can let students know as they come in uh, to start their program at ASU. The purpose of the study um, was to explore the current views of Arizona State University Medical Studies pre-health juniors as it relates to their own stress and readiness for medical and professional school. The questions that guided my research um, included what are the current perceived levels of stress and readiness regarding the medical and professional school preparation and application process, as well as um, in what ways, if any, has perceived stress and readiness affected the students' postgraduate plans. Um, for this quantitative study, I sent um, out an anonymous online survey via Qualtrics to all 335 medical studies juniors. The reason why I picked um, juniors specifically is because it is during junior year that students are typically preparing uh, for applying for medical and professional schools. It is also the year that they're preparing for um, and taking their MCAT or other graduate school tests. Um, 44 students responded. And they answered 22 questions, um, which included demographic questions, questions on a rating scale related to their stress and readiness levels, as well as one open-ended question about their change of plans if they did mention they changed their uh, career and uh, academic plans. The readiness questions were based on variables that have been shown through research to affect uh, student perceived readiness. These included level of connectedness to faculty, ability to, spend, um, to request and receive recommendation letters, to participate in clinical internships, gain volunteer hours, participate in professional events and clubs, and the perceived readiness for medical school interview. The majority of the uh, respondents were female um, at 75%, which is actually um, reflective of the medical studies um, degree cohort. And the majority of students who responded were between 18 and 23 years old. Some key findings that I'd like to share with you today um, include the fact that students on average reported high levels of stress. Um, interestingly, female students reported higher levels of stress um, than male students across multiple dimensions. 
Students also reported low levels of readiness when it came to um, their preparation for medical and professional school. And students who reported a change of plans since January 2020, which um, I'm taking as pre-COVID-19 pandemic times, on average also reported higher levels of stress than students who mentioned um, no change of plans. Um, students were asked to rate their level of stress um, about being admitted to medical school. And um, the scale was used uh, from one to five, as you can see on the slide. On average, students reported close to high stress, but I do want to um, highlight the fact that females on average, um, and most females responded um, with higher level of stress than male students, male students who were close to moderate stress levels. Um, students were also asked if they completed clinical internships, volunteer hours, and if they've attended professional events or clubs. If they had mentioned they did not complete one of these tasks, they were also asked to rate their stress level about being able to um, do so before they graduate, um, their stress level about being able to do so. Um, interestingly, even though males reported a lower number of uh, percentage of tasks completed at 24%, they also reported lower levels of stress than females who reported um, almost double the percentage of tasks completed. Across the variables um, that affect student perceived readiness, students rated their readiness on the lower scale. Um, they were slightly ready for medical school, for the medical school interview, as well as slightly prepared to take the um, graduate test. I do want to highlight the fact that um, the majority of students mentioned that they did not feel connected to faculty at all and they were only slightly confident that they would be able to request and receive recommendation letters from faculty. Students were also asked if they had changed their plans since um, their educational or career uh, plans since January 2020. Again, I'm taking that as pre-COVID times. Um, and 35% of students mentioned that yes, they did change their plans. Those students who changed their plans did report a higher stress level as well as a lower readiness level than students who did not change their plans. I also asked an open-ended question to, um, to, for students who did mention change of plans, and um, almost a third of students did mention COVID-19 and the pandemic as the reason for this change. About 33% mentioned feelings of stress and feeling not ready, um, but the majority of students changed their plans upon learning of other options available to them. As soon as she's done, it can go. Oh, okay. But you, if you're like, we don't have to go right then. Like, if you're playing. Hi, Nikki. We can hear you. <laughs> um, so, the implications for the study um, it, is, uh, it seems to be clear that higher levels of stress can have an impact on whether students decide to pursue medical and professional school. Um, one suggestion I would have is for pre health advising to uh, work on highlighting and connecting pre med students to the resources in the areas that students showed lower levels of readiness, which again included connectedness to faculty, um, preparation for the graduate tests, and graduation interviews. Some limitations um, included the fact that I only uh, reached out to students within a one degree program at the university. So for further research, um, further research could include pre-med students across all other programs at the university to better understand the pre-med student experience. Another um, limitation is that students um, may have underreported their levels of stress and overreported their levels of readiness, as um, this is typically seen to be the case, as it is it can be considered a sign of weakness among their peers. Um, further research could also explore if the stress levels may have been heightened and affected by the current um, pandemic. And that is all. Thank you so much, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you so much. <laughs> so um, thank you for that, Jordan. Um, so I have to say this is my first time participating in a, a virtual uh, poster session. And um, that felt like a whirlwind, but in a good way. Um, so thank you all for your presentations. Uh, both Dr. McIntyre and I had an opportunity to hop around from room to room. Um, I'm actually going to stop talking and turn over to Dr. McIntyre. And I'll say a little bit more to, to close us out at the end. 
All right. I just wanted to congratulate all of you. You should be very proud of what you did. Um, I know this semester was like none other. Um, just like Dr. McGuire, that was my first um, virtual poster session. Um, and I just want to commend you all on your resilience and determination um, in making it work. We had all kinds of fun challenges to work through um, and we all did it and had great communication. And I think um, you you all just the potential is, is limitless for all of you. So I wish you all the best of luck. Um, I hope to hear updates from you all where your careers take you and um, always here as a resource for, for you all. So um, I see all the applause and uh, celebrations going up. Um, it might be a bit much to unmute and do a round of applause, but I um, uh, wanna thank all the guests, um, family members who were able to join us today. Um, that is one of the great things about our virtual um, opportunity is that I think we might've been able to expand our, our audience a bit more. Um, we will be sharing recordings with the students. So if you weren't able to have a guest join us today, um, please share it with them. Um, there's no way any of us would have made it through this program without all the support of our family and friends. Um, and I also want to thank our colleagues. Um, so every student in the in this part of the project has access to a professional mentor who's met with them multiple times throughout the semester and giving them feedback and encouragement. And so um, thank you all for, for doing that for our students. It really um, was great to see the, the feedback and insights and having that other perspective to bounce ideas around was really helpful and benefited the work. So, um, all right, well, I'll stop gushing. Uh, Dr. McGuire, <laughs> what did you have? Yeah, so just one more um, uh, thank you before we move on, which is to Jody um, and her team um, who have handled all the logistical um, um, responsibilities for today is setting up the virtual rooms, making sure that all the Zoom leaks work and making sure that we have facilitators in each room. So thank you to Jody, uh, Ashley, Pinnock, Liam, Liam, Caitlin uh, for your support um, and making sure that this program went off uh, without any hiccups. So, so thank you all very much uh, for making this easy for Dr. McIntyre and myself. Um, I also would just like to echo Dr. McIntyre and thank our mentors. Um, um, usually we have like mentors and program instructors like raise their hand. Um, I think there's a reaction to do that. So if you know how to raise your hand or put a thumbs up, maybe <laughs> if you want to put a thumbs up, how about that? Um, so that we can acknowledge all of our mentors and program faculty who teach and work alongside our students throughout the program. Um, your support is sincerely um, and deeply appreciated. Um, as you all know, I think one of the biggest strengths of our program um, is that we have meaningful and long lasting relationships with individuals who are um, educators and scholars uh, working both at ASU, but also um, across the valley um, and sometimes in, as well as in uh, other states. And so um, we appreciate uh, the support that you provide and, and the mentorship and uh, the learning that you, or the, the way that you help to expand the learning of our students in our program. So thank you very much uh, for that. And most importantly, I wanna say uh, congratulations and thank you to our students. Um, I'm sure as it cannot go um, overstated, I think how unique this semester um, has been. Um, and you all um, continue to um, approach the project um, and your uh, capstone experience with um, enthusiasm, uh, with a level of dedication, um, a level of um, uh, flexibility and creativity uh, that I think um, I was just excited to see and gave me also energy as I entered um, and worked with you all over the last seven and a half weeks. Um, and so I know very few things feel like um, it's, it's normal as far as celebrating things in this particular context, but we do hope that you will find time to honor this moment in some way uh, to reflect back on all of the hard work that you've accomplished over your time in the program um, and that you are able to enjoy at least a moment of reprieve with family and friends and colleagues um, because what you have accomplished um, not only today and throughout the semester but over the program um, is definitely worth uh, celebrating um, and has been our pleasure um, to be on this journey alongside of you. Um, so there's just two more things before we wrap up. So first one is kind of a, an announcement of sorts, which is at the very end, we'll ask all mentors, uh, program faculty and students to stay on uh, the call so that we can take um, a photo um, 
we may have to take multiple photos. I actually don't know how this works, taking photos in Zoom, but Jody will be here to assist us with that. Um, and also every uh, semester during the Capstone Experience, we um, have an opportunity to recognize a student, uh, one of your colleagues and um, peers um, who is um, nominated um, by uh, program faculty um, as a recognition for their um, achievement and contributions. Um, both inside and outside of the classroom to the higher and post-secondary education program. And so this year we'll have an opportunity to do the same. And what I'm going to do is just share very briefly um, what um, one nominator said about this particular student um, before I announce who the student is. And, and again, we, um, and Lindsay, Dr. Dipple, who was on the call, normally does this part and does it much more eloquently than I do as I fumble <laughs> through this process. But it's really an opportunity for us to uh, recognize a, a peer who, um, who has made uh, significant contributions, who has also impressed upon faculty with their dedication, not simply in this course, but throughout the program, um, and is therefore worthy of the, the nomination. We usually will hand you a piece of paper um, or a certificate of, um, of an award um, framed, um, we will have to connect after this in order to pass that along to you. Um, but one nominator said about uh, this student, that this student is extremely engaged. Um, they also demonstrate a high level of intellectual uh, curiosity. Um, and they also not only work well with students, but um, embrace uh, collaboration. Um, and that this student in particular deserves recognition for their outstanding contributions that they made to the learning um, environment within and across classrooms. And so without further ado, that student is Dakota Weber. So let's give Dakota a round of applause. And also Dakota, congratulations. I know you didn't know this was happening. Um, you and I can connect after to make sure that you get your certificate and award, but again, congratulations um, and for uh, a, an award that's well-deserved. Okay. You. Yes, you're welcome, you're welcome. All right. So. We're going to stop there again. Thank you for everyone who um, came and visited with us. We'll ask for the students and program faculty um, and mentors to stay on so that we can get one picture um, and we will share that out with everyone as well.